What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. Uh huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk. We the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk. We the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand. So please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot. So put a tie on your plans. On court. Talk of sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so we Ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. So. <laughs> We're doing things a little different right now because we're all being safe, home, quarantine. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Emerald Marie. We have Trip in the building. And we have Eric Sanchez. Ooh, mess up your whole name. And we have Walking Ivan. Up already. <laughs> I know. Just wilding out already. I'm... I know, I know, I know, got I know. Crazy. You must have stole the bar and put it in your house. playing basketball today. I'm all over. What? You must have stole the bar and put it in your house. <laughs> You know what? Listen. We are I'm figures. <laughs> figures. But yeah, I went to the I went to go work out and then I got, you know, had a little get a little drink to calm myself before I got together with y'all. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but what's going on? How's everyone's quarantine life? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I got got outside today for the first time in like two or three days. Uh, went to Target and went to the uh, grocery store. So it's a beautiful day outside. So, oh, we got, you know. we got, we got to give, we got to give you the proper, the proper intro because you can't. He came all the way from the from the, from the Brooklyn Nets uh, <laughs> NBA Two K <laughs> League to uh, to to rock out with us. Ivan Kurt, the the general manager and the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets uh, <laughs> NBA Two K League team. Uh, I appreciate, I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, I. You know, I like we was talking earlier. I mean, I, I was glad, grateful that uh, you hit me up to do this. Um, my heart was broke the week that I was supposed to come into the studio and do it because I was looking forward to that. Yeah, and, I, and I was like, that's like a week I ain't never going to forget now because it was like right dead smack when they started canceling uh, everything. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm glad to be here. I've been following y'all on uh, social media, uh, everything like that. So um, just glad to formally meet y'all. Appreciate well, you. We appreciate the support, and it's it's so nice to finally meet you as well. Uh, we'll definitely we'll we'll get this in in live in studio a little uh, re redo at some point. But thank you for joining us. Oh, no doubt. Absolutely, yeah, man. We got We got to get into it. Like I said, at some point we are going to get you in studio. Uh, but talk about your journey uh, to becoming not only coach but GM of the Nets E League team because we know that's something that's really taken off over the last few years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, 2014, 2015, they just added the, the my players uh, part mode to the to the game. Um, I was into 2K, you know, I'm, I'm in my early 40s. So it was like I've been playing 2K when it didn't even have no numbers behind it. So um, when they added that mode, it intrigued me because I always like playing the, the career mode. So now, you, you know, I like playing as NBA players, but I thought it'd be dope if you can play as yourself. So they put that mode into the game. Uh, the rec center came along with it. And at that point, I was I was playing it. And I was hearing about different leagues that you could play in. Like, people were forming teams and playing organized. Uh, so I, I searched the blogs, uh, different gaming uh, channels and stuff like that. And I finally found a league uh, that I could play in. Um, 
you know, fast forward, I started playing in the other league. And uh, the first league I played in was the ABL. Then the second league I got into was the SBA. And um, I really want to give a shout out to Dietrich Glover because he he was one of the first pioneers to, to start the, the organized league uh, setting. Um, and we pretty much uh, rolled the wave after that and just took it to another level. My, my partner, LT, was playing in the SBA. Um, one day we were sitting and talking and he was like, uh, Kurt, I think I can do a league better than all the other leagues. And I was like, you know, bet, let's do it. And he was, I was like, what you want to call it? And he was like, the NPBA. I said, what does that stand for? He said, the My Player Basketball Association. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, so right towards uh, the middle of 2015, we started. And uh, just fast forward into 2016, uh, it was the number one uh, amateur league circuit in the world. Um, pretty yeah. much if you, if you played at that mode, uh, from 2015, you know, all the way up until 2018, we knew who you were, you knew who we were, uh, all the way from here to Europe. Like, I mean, a lot of people, uh, was playing, um, in all spectacles of the, of the country and in the world. So, uh, 2017, when they announced that they was going to have a 2K league, 80% of the players who got drafted in that first season all came out of the NPBA. And, what, what, was, uh, that, what was your ranking at that time? Uh, when you say ranking, what, what do you mean? As far as on um, 2K. You know, uh, like the um, record-wise, like, because you know that only, Oh, the leaderboard. Leagues. You talking about the leaderboard? Yeah, the, the leaderboard, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, this is the funny part. Like, after I started working and, and running and operating the league, I played, but I didn't play as much. I, I took you okay. know, the other route, I got on the other side of, you know, more of a ministry business route. And, 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 yeah. And, uh, I, I saw a longer game and, and a better game with that. So, um, and, and I never, to be I, like my, I played good and I was on good teams, but we never was at the, the top tier, but most of those top tier guys was the ones that was getting drafted and dominating in our league. So okay. it, it kind of made sense after a while. Um, but that pretty much caught the attention of the 2k league. Um, Players, as soon as they got drafted, they were shouting us out during the draft. Like it, it was dope. And uh, me and LT, we got picked up the first season uh, with Bus GG. Uh, I actually uh, just past uh, Friday, I did a flashback and um, I posted a picture on Instagram where basically it was season one and uh, we was hanging out after the fact and we basically was just sitting there just in awe of what happened. Um, you know, a journey that we started on that we never even knew that it was going to take us this far. And uh, to be sitting in that moment, and you know, that was two years ago. And now um, I'm where GM and coach for the Brooklyn Nets gaming crew and LT is the general manager and coach for Dallas Mavs GG, uh, which is the okay. affiliate team of the Dallas Mavs. So you got I mean, a little it, rivalry? Um, <laughs> he, got, he, 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 he got me last year. He got me. We was up. Uh, it was a close game up until the third. And uh, they broke away in the fourth, but uh, it's it's definitely a uh, I don't know I get excited every time I talk, talk about it because you know how you you just start doing something out of passion and then love for yeah. it, and then boom, here it is. You know you're at a high level, and uh, I'm just truly grateful and honored to be in the position that I am. Yeah, I got to get the chip this year though because y'all can't have the Knicks one up in y'all in the city. Hey, I, I know, man. I know, I know and trust. Like, uh, and you know, and you know what's crazy about that? I've been a Nick fan. I was a Nick fan my whole life, like my whole life. Like this story of like beyond just two K, but just in New York in general. Like ever since I was six years old, I was a I was a Nick fan, and um, and I what I didn't recently. I just recently transferred over. Uh, once I got employed by Brooklyn, and uh, it only made sense. <laughs> <laughs> it, it only made sense. At that you see time. what the man got on his shirt right there? You see what he got on his shirt? You know what it is. This, that's that's a valid reason. That's a valid reason. Yeah, that ain't no valid. Uh, uh, that ain't no valid reason, Em. Hey, don't don't be close on that. Hey, but em, em, if it's one, if it's one reason to switch team, because I've been dedicated. I mean, I'm still a Giants and a Yankee fan. Like, uh, but. Yeah. If there's one reason to switch, it's because they, you know, they 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 keep the lights on, they keep the food and the fridge, yeah. you know. So like, and and, and my senior smart, vice president, smart man, smart man. 
uh, Joshua Press, who oversees uh, MSGC for uh, BSE Global, I asked mm -hmm. him uh, who was his favorite team coming up. And he was a Knicks fan, too. And, and, and he gave the same reason of why he became a Brooklyn Mets fan because, <laughs> that, you know, he he'd been working with them over 10 years now. And um, great guy. So listen, uh, Sorry, but I was to say when the Knicks, when the Knicks start cutting you a check, then you can switch back. But for now, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> slow that down, Em. Slow, slow that down. I'm sorry, you got to slow that down. I'm for it. <laughs> nah, but we at the Barclays Center too. You can't be switching sides. Yeah, no, I know, it. You know, you know, I do dabble with the Knicks <laughs> and the Brooklyn sometimes. Look, I'm a New Yorker. I support New York. Now this, is, now this is the thing with um. With us coming up through the ropes like we did and, and basically creating a platform for amateur players to play on, we kind of, we kind of, we kind of was writing the story of how to do it without even knowing. Um, basically yeah. now it's like, it's other uh, amateur leagues and tournament circuits to play on uh, before you take that next step into trying to qualify for the combine and then in hopes to make the, the draft pool. So basically what I tell people and recommend uh, when they hit me up and trying to figure out what's the best route or how they go about it, you, you, you have to play in the amateur leagues, um, the MPBA, the WRs. Um, it, you know, now it's a lot of circuits going on. The top tier leagues, they run a tournament circuit. Uh, next mm -hmm. up, Pro-Am. And it's, it can go on and on to – a lot of uh, circuits that's running, and you want to get in there, you want to play against the best of the best. Um, it's a it's a lot of um, media circuits that that focus on, you know, covering these amateur events and doing different things like that. That was one of the big things that won us won a lot of people over with us is that it wasn't just about you come play in our league, you sign up, you play, you win, uh, you move on. It was. You know, we covered it live. We gave awards. We we put a lot of uh, marketing into it. We put a lot of journalism into it. We're writing about players, writing about teams. So when you ask that question, it's like doing different things like that. Put them um, on notice with a lot of like now, which is you have teams that's looking and paying attention and scouting. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see those type things. No, all right. So we 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 went to the. Uh... 2K draft this year. You guys took uh, Chuck, I believe it was it was the eighth ninth pick, pick. You guys, ninth pick. You guys had the ninth pick. Uh, what made you guys go with Chuck on that pick? Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's funny. Last last season, um, we I had a a, a really so, a solid team, a, a solid group of good good young men, and, and basically. Uh, we we just didn't have that ah like that that you know what I'm saying like we was we was kind of choir boys like like you know on that stage you you need a presence and you need uh, confidence and you need you need a splash Somebody of arrogance in there yeah, yeah like and and we and we was lacking that we it was more we was we in last season I pretty much write it off just simply as just a a year of inconsistency you know when we was playing well we played well when we when we played bad we played really bad. Like, I mean, we didn't have no meeting. And, like, I feel like with Chuck, he gave us that that breath of fresh air. You know, he, he he's a great player. Uh, he comes in with a lot of acclaim from what he's done um, in his journey to becoming the first legend in uh, 2K20. Uh, and then uh, I'm, I've known him, you know, since he came onto the scene. And he has that flair and he has that that that, that aura of, of uh, a little cockiness and that a little chip on his shoulder, got something to prove. Um, didn't make the uh, the 2K League uh, the first couple of seasons. So now he's finally – he was finally in and had an opportunity. And I kind of wanted to get somebody who had that that something to prove attitude. And I think um, mm. it fits in well with the New York culture. I mean, this is my That's second fair. season being here. And, and you – this ain't fair – this city ain't for everybody. Like, I mean – You got to have it, a little chip on your shoulder to really, like, yeah. survive. In anything that you do in New York, you gotta have a little bit of cockiness. Yeah, definitely. So it was like I wanted to start to get some players that kind of fit the the true culture of what you know New York stood stands for, and and Brooklyn in itself, you know, and uh, that grit and that hunger and that 
you know, I'm going to win type attitude by any means necessary. So uh, yeah. that led to me uh, drafting him at nine. Shout out to uh, to Chuck. You guys at uh, at home, uh, you guys saw the interview with CJ and Chuck at the draft. But I'm actually when we when this uh, episode airs, I'm gonna drop that interview inside of this uh, episode so that you guys at home can check it out again. He definitely brought the swag uh, to, nah. to the draft, <laughs> so it, it, it was fitting that, that he that he came to Brooklyn. We got we gonna have to get him on the show one of these days uh, uh, as well. Um, no, no doubt, no doubt. I think it's interesting that you said that because a lot of times there are people who feel they're really good or feel they're the man within their own comfortable surroundings. But when you got to get on that big stage and you got to play around people that you normally don't play around, how important is it to have that attitude that you bring to the table that you feel like I can handle the trash talk and I can handle anything you throw at me? Man, you know, it's funny because I'm going to tell you something that's real. Like, you, you go from playing at home uh, wherever you are in your bedroom, uh, basement, wherever. And, you know, you can, it's easy to hide those emotions because, you know, not everybody streams with a camera or, or talks in a, in a party or, or let people know what's going on. So you can hide a lot of things. The one thing yeah. I like about the 2K league is it, it, it's, it's no hide. Like, I mean, yeah. and, and then on top of that, um, yeah, we do have certain players that have uh, high Twitch numbers and get a lot of views and, and stuff like that. But it's nothing compared to the amount of eyes that's on you when you're playing in the 2K league. And, and a lot mm -hmm. of things get exposed um, if, if you're not who you who you say you are. Uh, it kind of takes me back to that Lupe fiasco a little bit. Like, you know, when the lights come on, you know, who are mm -hmm. you? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got to be who mm -hmm. you say you are. And I, and I think uh, that's something I definitely was looking for. And I know. Um, you know, like Chuck has no back down to him, and I think that's going to transfer over into the other players um, as well. Right. Now, how do you feel uh, just seeing the suspension of NBA with everything that's going on with Corona, just, you know, us taking in those sports right now? How is that affecting your your yeah. life? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny. I mean, because, like, look at us. Here we, here we are. Like, we still... Uh, able to conduct a, a, a multi-person interview and still be able to interact, and and that speaks out. That speaks volumes to what we do uh, yeah. as our professions and stuff like that. Uh, I always used to tell people because a lot of you know I'm from Dayton, Ohio, a small small town kid. Uh, still in my small town ways, I'm just I'm just thriving and surviving in the big city. But I say that because it's like I built my career inside the house like i didn't i didn't build it like being outside and That's doing true. a ton of things so yeah. it's like my nature is being an introvert i'm just an extrovert yeah. when when necessary and uh so for me um i was talking to ann and i was telling them like i've been in here content creating my butt off like <laughs> i've been doing a lot yeah. of different things um went out and bought a couple of grow pros a day and different because i can't get to the the, the Barclays like I normally would to use everything that's there so I was like let me go get my own stuff and start doing some different things I um, created a website uh, got three new pages for my um, podcast so, so I've been making good use of it and uh, I know but I will say this the sports aspect of it, it it's new I mean like I say it's something that we haven't seen with a lot of things shutting down and the magnitude but what really hit me was I went to the grocery store later that night and um, a lady in front of me, she, she had a lot of groceries and she was packing them up. And you know how when somebody crying, but like the tears not really rolling out, but you can kind of see them in the corner. I, yeah. I looked and the cashier looked and um, yeah, he was like, ma'am, ma are you all right? And she was like, I just lost my job. And um, that's when like it really... Like, forget my thoughts on the whole everything. It was like, I'm sitting here witnessing a woman that obviously by how many groceries she had, she has kids. And, like, she just lost her job, and she may not know how she's going to be able to provide, you know, from that point forward. So, like, yeah. I told people on my one of my podcasts, like, be sensitive with your thoughts and uh, actions yeah. on, 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 on how you feel, whether you think it's real, whether you think it's, is fake or what, whatever type of propaganda you think or whatever, 
like realize it, it is people out here really being affected. And, uh, affected, yeah. That humble, yeah. that humbled me to the fullest, and and I'm already a humble guy, but that really like, I I yeah. cried with her. She didn't even know it. Like I cried with her. Yeah, I think um that's really a huge point what you just said because you know we we're all on Instagram right now and you see the plethora of memes and comments and a lot of the celebrities or I don't want to say just celebrities but anyone commenting like why are y'all complaining about being home? Like, read a book, relax. And I'm like, there's people who are complaining being home because they can't pay their bills. And I have a lot of friends that were in tears crying because they lost their jobs. And, you know, I used to bartend and serve, and I understand that um, industry is hurting really bad in whatever industry, but there was a lot of um, insensitivity on online because people weren't understanding that everyone's situation in this is different and I've met people who work in the stock market who are making more money from this. Some one of my friends is he's like, yo, I'm making like buku money being home. But then I have other friends that are like, yo, what am I gonna do? So um, you know, regardless of sports and other things that we're missing, entertainment, um, I think one thing I took from this is it made our our obsession of like celebrity culture less and like humanity and essential jobs a little bit greater. No, so. well, I totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, I, I mean, we can see um, <laughs> the power. We, one thing that's made a lot of people do is see uh, in my realm is the power of gaming, uh, the power of uh, social media <laughs> and, the, and the influence. Uh, I mean, a lot of, we see what, a lot more people on live now. We're getting entertained in, in multiple ways. Um, I'm learning more about different things, uh, sitting at home and reading and, and watching a lot more instructional videos. I, I really only use Netflix and any other type of things that late at night to go to sleep. And, and sleep has been hard to come by. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I've been going to bed every night like 3 or 4 a.m. It, it's tough. No, nah, that's a fact. Sleep patterns is completely thrown off at this point. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad that you um that you brought up the uh the, the the gaming effect right now, you know online gaming is so crazy right now, um but more so you know our our little area of expertise, the uh the two K leagues that's that's popping up right now they got the uh, the three for all, and that's a twenty five K uh tournament. If you are in the NBA two K league, can you still play in these tournaments? Yeah, the way they did it, and uh, shout out to the NBA 2K League team and staff. I mean, they now because I I had to tell them like um, I wasn't a big fan of Park. Like I I've never been a big fan of Park. Park was just always something I did to to buy time. So mm -hmm. it's like um, you know the way they the way they put it on the creativity that went behind it. They did two versions of it. They did the fan mm -hmm. versions. Uh, they did a fan tournament and then they did a pro tournament and they ended up merging them together. So basically the fan tournament allowed any, a lot of teams to sign up uh, just from the community. And mm -hmm. when they, I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was, a t they took the top eight teams from that and they qualified to play in the actual pro tournament uh, with the pros and other influencers. So in doing that, um, everybody had a chance to win money on both uh, divisions, whether it was PS4 or Xbox. And um, a pro team took it home, I believe, on Xbox. And Han Nation, uh, annoying, his team won on PS4. Okay. Uh, Blazer 5 Gaming won uh, the pro side, which is uh, the affiliate of the Portland Trailblazers. Okay, nice. I'm Sierra Jordan from Real Fans Real Talk, and I got Eric Donald, one of the NBA 2K League's best gamers back in season one. How are you today? I'm, I'm fine, man. I'm just blessed to be here. And um, how does it feel to be back? You know, you, we got kicked out um, for season two. What are some of the things that you will do differently now? Um, basically, now I just know, like, um, you basically use you, you sponsoring, like, a uh, like the, I'm part of the NBA family now, so basically you can't do things like repost stupid things that you did when you wasn't like a professional. So now I understand that I'm more professional. Um, I know I got kids looking up to me, so basically I got to be a better role model for basically my family, my daughter, and basically all the kids out there that got have dreams playing video games.
And what is some advice that you would give to young prospects that uh, look up to you? Um, pretty much never give up because, like I said, I was suspended a year and I didn't give up and I'm back on this stage. So um, I'm, I'm basically back and I'm better and I'm going to be better than ever. Are there any teams that you really want to be on? Um, no comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Eric. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Smush Parker here, pulling me up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, the gaming is, is is crazy right now. Um, oh man, you guys, because you know we we at the Barclays Center a lot. Shout out to uh to Joe's who take care of us whenever we at the at the Barclays Center. Um, they gave they just built the the new uh practice center for y'all at the Barclays Center. Yeah. It just opened now. Have the has the team been able to see it before everything got shut down, or ha or have they? Not yeah, they been um. We had uh, we had it last year too. Now we oh. just we just did some some changes to it and added some things to it. Um, but yeah, we actually got in there and was training well and and everything before uh, the coronavirus you know took place. So um, now um, they are practicing at the apartment. Um, they we they stay in a three thousand square foot uh, six bedroom loft uh, in Manhattan. Nice. Life is good. Life is good. You know. I mean, yeah. did it, I join. Like, <laughs> got, I keep telling you, Em, you got to step your game up, man. We we want you to play in the tournament this year, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to get back to the court. Yeah. Let me ask you, how much involvement do you, does the league get from um, the current players at the Nets? Um, uh, was due to. Um, you know, the current CBA, we don't do any integration yet mm -hmm. um, as far as um, the actual pro players and the gamers. We do have access to uh, G League, um, WNBA. Uh, we can, you know, it can be uh, professional players of other sports. I think that's something that's still uh, in the works. And, um, you know, it's funny because I think at a moment like this, it may, it could potentially speed up the process because. Uh, it's a lot of things being lost here, and you know you still have investors and and uh, and things like that who still want to see their money being put to use. So I think uh, hopefully it can it can speed up the process so we can integrate at some point in time. But uh, I know it's it's uh, one of those things slowly but surely, and uh, right. just at the current moment we haven't been able to integrate. Now, as uh, far as like social media, I think t at least uh, twice a day our pro team uh, can interact on via social media with our um, 2K League team. But um, to that point, um, we can't overly publicize or do anything publicly. Okay. But you guys are still, like, because it's, everything is online, so technically you guys can actually still run the, the season according to schedule, or you guys are still waiting? Uh, we It's still, uh, it's still plans being uh, – put into place uh, for us to be able to go about business as usual, you know, mm -hmm. as much as we can right now. But uh, definitely, uh, I think it's going to be, it's doing a lot of testing uh, because obviously our, our, our game is created for the stage. So it's like mm -hmm. now trying to uh, reinvent the wheel uh, due to what's going on. I think, um, I think it's going to, it's going to happen. I uh, can't speak mm -hmm. on when, but it's going to happen. We're just going to do a lot of test runs with it and and see where we go from there. But it's definitely something that is going to happen in the, in the early in the near future. Is, uh, I think we're going to put on some events and do some different things. Uh, still keep our brand alive during this time. Thanks. What was your uh, What was your thought on uh, Patrick Beverly the other night and the way he was trash talking during the games? Uh. That's that's Pete Bev though. Like I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, it, I, it's so funny because um, I, I I you know before I got into actual two K and and everything like that, I coached high school basketball for almost twenty years. So it's like I've been on the 
the the the real side of it and the virtual side of it. And like I like players like that. Like I always I fact. never like I never like players that I had to that counted on me to get them motivated. And uh, the, one of the phrases I used to say all the time was like, I can't be your inspiration. Nobody can be your inspiration if you want to be great at something. Like you, yeah. it comes from within. And uh, it's the same thing I preach to my, my guys now, even on the virtual side. So like somebody like Patrick Beverly, it's like, I, you know, you, some people going to love to hate him. You know, I, it, it's the type that uh, you want them on your team. Like, you don't, you don't want to have to deal with him. But if he on your team, he looks like one of those guys. Like, if he with you, like, he with you. Like, but if he ain't with you, it's over with. So, like, I love it. Um, that's a fact. And so, so as of now, because you guys were actually supposed to be starting this month. but you, So, you guys don't have a, a start date just yet. Right. Uh, we still pra- we still practicing and uh, going about things that you know as as normal routine when we not playing. Uh, as far as um, now, it's a mode. It's a uh, inner inner league scrimmage mode that we play on online, uh, where we scrimmage against other teams. So everybody's still going about that as usual as much as possible. Uh, obviously, it's made it difficult for some organizations because some of us are. Like I said, we're playing our apartment, which is we normally don't play at our apartment. So, of course, you experience some technical difficulties here and there. And it's the same for other organizations. They can't get into their uh, facilities and, and different things because a lot of our, like, a lot of leagues have their facilities within the arena. So, uh, a lot of people does not ha- have access uh, like that to get. And then they worry about the, the constant travel back and forth and everything like that. Uh, and just in following proper guidelines and everything like that. So um, it, it's been rough, but we've been making the best of it. Um, even at this point, um, I haven't even been at, uh, a, a, allowed basically to travel back and forth over to the apartments. Uh, oh, to so, be so there the, coaches, the coaches don't stay at the houses with the players? Oh, no, I'm in, I'm in East Village. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm not too far away from them, but, uh, you know, I'm – I kind of, I could, you know, for me personally, like last year we was in the same building, but we was on different sides of the building. But mm-hmm. I kind of like for me to have my own place away and, and, that, and let them be able to breathe and not be on top of each other and stuff like that. And uh, right now they don't even know where I stay at, which is uh, I kind of, I'm kind of happy about that. It, you know, I, sometimes, you, you know, you just need that break. But they know they can always reach me and always uh, be in touch with me. So uh, that's cool. So that's what it is, man. Um, what do you see like with the growth of the league for, for people who don't play esports on a regular basis? Like this is kind of out of the blue for them, everything that's going on. Where do you see the league going over the next few years as it continues to grow and the teams actually start putting more money into the esports? I I always say the sky's the limit. I mean, I think the one thing that makes esports great is that you don't have to be six nine, you don't have to be seven foot, and and, and two hundred and fifty five pounds ripped to be a a, a pro center in, in esports. I, I mean, and, and especially in our respective game. So I think it gives everybody an equal opportunity. And the other thing is, um, I just did a show. Um, earlier today uh, something I started called Twitch Tuesdays where I do a live Twitch show and I was talking to some people and uh, you know females are not to be excluded uh, from gaming like I mean I think gaming is, is is the bonding agent that brings a lot of different people together male female you know white black any you know any and everybody like it's it just like you yeah, right, yeah exactly it's just like music movies entertainment all of that and so within saying that, it's like, it's no telling where it could go. I think uh, you said the key word is you have to uh, keep putting money into it, keep keep putting it into fresh faces, uh, keep being innovative. Uh, the one thing about it is like, obviously the 2K team is, uh, uh, the 2K league team is doing something right. The, the prize pool is going up every year and uh, different venues and, and different um 
like we was all set to play in a different uh, arena this year and uh, different amenities to go along with it. Uh, we were uh, selling tickets and doing everything to, to show the growth uh, that, that's existing and, and moving forward. And a lot of different sponsorships are jumping in. Um, so I think, um, is like I said, sky's the limit. I think the more people see it, I think almost is, this is pretty soon it'll be our time to shine because no pro games are being played. Uh, <laughs> it's your like time that. right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's like it's one of those things where I think uh, once because because it's like this. Uh, doing my grind of what I told y'all earlier, uh, a 35, 36 year old man. I, now I work. I always worked two, three jobs. Coach took care of my kids and everything like that. But when I had a lot, when I had free time, all my free time was spent on the couch playing the game or talking to people through the game. So people was looking at it like a big waste of time until until I signed with with, with Brooklyn. And it was like, oh man, like it's it's real. Like, you know, yeah. these people really like making a living doing this. So I think that's the the wake up factor that is always gonna allow us to keep growing because once people realize there's a lot of people, um, I said my whole life, like I never knew what I wanted to do per se. I, I had ideas about where I could see myself, but I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't know where I was going to end up. And um, I just kept doing what I was doing. And, and luckily uh, with a lot of hard work and, and, and still luck involved and being blessed, I got here, but I think it gives people hope um, mm -hmm. in a lot of different arenas. We talking about employment. Uh, it's a lot of levels to esports that people don't even talk about. People just focus on the player, but uh, it's, it's content creators, it's graphic artists, it's journalists. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot of different things be, uh, behind the scenes with videographers, producers, and all of that. And I think, so that's why when I think about Sky's the Limit, as long as people keep wanting to be a part of it and keep wanting to make things greater, it can go anywhere people want it to go. You mentioned the, the ladies, you know, being welcome to the, you know, into the game and, you guys, there were actually two ladies in the draft pool this year. How do you guys, um, I know, you know, 2K added WNBA now. How do you guys get um, get more ladies involved in online gaming, or more specifically 2K? Last, no say, say that again. Go, oh, I just, Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> In Long no, Island, we don't have sirens, but go ahead. <laughs> no, last uh, last August, um, we uh, they held the first uh, women's in development, uh, the women's in game and development camp, and I was honored to be a part of it. And um, so, it was the first initiative taken towards giving female players who play two K. <laughs> Uh, more knowledge, more exposure about the game and, and taking next level steps into, you know, becoming a pro. And uh, it was a, it was a two, three day event. Speakers came in uh, from all walks, whether it was professional uh, uh, WNBA players or former WNBA players, a lot of different uh, powerful women came in and uh, talked and, and we held uh, seminars training sessions uh, we did put the uh, female was 15 uh, female gamers uh, comprised them of three different teams uh, we were uh, each coach was a, uh, assigned a team and and we competed and and, and learned a lot and, and and they seen a lot um, in those two or three days and um, it was an awesome experience and I think uh, that 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 was the first part of it is saying like yo look like yo the league cares like they're like we want to put you know female gamers in position uh, to be looked at as serious prospects and um, a lot of knowledge you know and I and I want to say this is 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 kind and, and as sweet as I can like but you know how like you can tell people how to do something or give them the best advice you can give them on how to do something. And you know, once you walk away, it's up to them to make the next move or the next steps into making that happen. And yeah. um, I think it's not only, and I'm saying this uh, openly uh, as the community, male or female, it's like people have to make this, the steps necessary 
uh, to becoming a pro in order to do that. And like when I was saying earlier is about playing on the platforms that's created or that exists to get that exposure. I encourage the female gamers, the female 2K player, players that are serious about making a league to do that on the regular. From what yeah. I've witnessed and, and experienced over my time is that a lot of the, the, the female 2K players, they play um, a lot of park and they play a lot of rec. And mm. those um, those don't get you to those don't those don't get you the exposure of what you're trying to get you know where you're trying to get to, and uh, right. that was one of the things that was hard for me to watch is because in August I had said something to him about making sure that you play in in these events, and then as I watched, I, they were like most of them were nowhere to be found. And uh, it was rough for me to watch that because, like, when we are putting together a team or, or trying to figure out who we're going to draft, it's it's the knowledge. Like, for me, I have Wyoming Cooney, who's my assistant GM, and he is a, a social media manager. He assists me in a lot of day-to-day -day operations with the team as far as picking players and, and everything that's involved with SGC. And, like, mm -hmm. for us – we break we don't look at it whether it's male or female we trying to find the best fit for us mm -hmm. and the only way we can do that is by constantly seeing you and what you're made of in a lot of different situations and unfortunately i didn't see a lot of that uh with, with the female gamers as mm -hmm. far as like making sure that they're playing on those platforms to, to get that type of exposure yeah it's it's kind of like a Catch 22 because even though you seem like you guys are opening the doors for females to join, there may still be that like hesitation, discouragement of like kind of entering that environment. But it's like, hey, look, this is the way we're going to make evoke this change, but you have to take the step. So it's going to be like that cycle until someone is really aggressive and it's like, okay, look, like I'm really going to 100% dive in. And then it's going to kind of promote that culture and get the ball rolling. So I can see how that's a little frustrating because you can't, you know, you can't force it to happen, but it's, it's there to happen. Right. I mean, and, 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 and now let me come back in, around and say this, though. It, like, the two, the two female players that were in the draft pool, can, they can play. Like, I mean, and, and, and the other part, I just have to keep it real. Like, it's 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 going it's always going to be an uphill battle no matter what you're when you're trying to do something that only a rare that it's only 138 players in the world that can call themselves a pro 2k player so you know like the obstacles and everything that you're going to have to deal with whether you make it or don't make it or 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 high and it's crazy and especially out of 138 players there's no even last year um we go back and we shrink the numbers a little bit because obviously two teams joined in uh, this, you know, this season. But last mm -hmm. year, minus 12 players, it was only one female in the 2K league. And, I'm, and, wow. and it's tough. And I, and I think I, in gaming, that's something that's not always talked about. But females don't always get the, they don't, they don't always get their fair treatment of how, how of how, you know, male gamers treat them, and and how they're not respected, and they more the more often they're likely to be disrespected, uh, whether yeah. they're good or not. I mean, it's just it's unfortunate, and it's not it's definitely something that I don't condone, and and or anything like that. But it's tough. Um, I, and yeah. and then I mean to dig a little deeper in, and it's funny because you do have some female gamers who get into gaming, they get into streaming, and uh, they do a lot of different things on stream to become more attractive and to get more viewers and to get partnered and to get sponsors. So it take it devalues the, the female gamers that's actually trying to make that journey and just be a pro gamer and not trying to be objectified or anything like that. I mean, I can go deep into it. I mean, because it's yeah. kind of like who I am and what I do, but it, it's, it's yeah. rough. and. Um, and I, I want to keep applying the, the female gamers as, that stays at it and don't back down. And, and hopefully, um, I think this year was a, a learning experience because uh, I, I tell people 
uh, basically the first season when me and LT participated in the 2K League, we weren't coaches. We wasn't GMs. We just were brought in to help uh, build an organization. And then after that, uh, we pretty much got left in the wind. And uh, at that moment, we could have we could have sulked and, and 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 cried about it and, and gave up or quit or or but we didn't. We just looked at it as a learning curve. And I hope that's what a lot of you know doesn't matter whether it's male or female players who make the draft pool and they sit there in the draft room and they don't get drafted. I hope that's not our means for them to say I, I quit. Like I hope yeah. it's something that they wake up and be like, hey. You know, I'm going to keep grinding it and, and I'm going to make it happen one day. And yeah. um, so definitely. Where where do you, as a player, where do you get the info on how to make it into the league? That's a great question. Um, you know, social media is heavy. Um, uh, you know, the NBA 2K League is on all social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, they they tweet out regularly. Um, they post regularly on Instagram and Facebook. Um, obviously, um, a lot of tools like myself, who um, I will never, uh, quote unquote, forget where I came from. Uh, you know, I'm from the community. Uh, I, I served the community way before I was uh, involved with the 2K League. So I'm making my duty to, to share the information from the league on all channels. Uh, I use my platform to promote it as well, uh, even on my podcast or anything that I'm doing. I make sure that I'm spreading some type of knowledge uh, about the league and everything. Because to me, I, I, my, my whole thing is that um, it has to grow and it has to keep growing. And the only way that happens is the more and more people know about it, the more exposure it gets. Yeah. And, you know, that, that helps keep me employed. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm definitely going to support it to the fullest. And uh, and it's something I love. Like, I mean, it, most people, uh, you don't you don't get to wake up and do what you love every day. And uh, yeah. I, I'm one of the few uh, that's probably, uh, you know, less than 5% of the world that gets to do that every day. And um, yeah. I don't take it lightly. And uh, that's why I'm grateful for, like, platforms like this where, I get a chance to come on and, and talk about not only my story, but what I do. And, and hopefully I help inspire other people who are trying to do the same thing. Yeah. And I think you definitely have, because I think uh, there's a misconception to gaming in the beginning. So to know that you can make an income, you know, a lot of, a lot of men get a bad uh, rep for, you know, playing their video games on their couch and some people may be discouraged. <laughs> But this, this this brings a whole new, I know for me, open my eyes, like, okay, this is a legit, like, this is a whole culture. This is employment. So you've definitely me, changed I, the game. It, you know what I like, though? Like, and it's funny you said that because, like, even I see a lot of the memes and posts uh, within relationships, especially, like, yeah. all, all he want to do is sit on the couch and play the game. Play games. And then it's funny, you know, I'm single now. Uh, but I, I was in a relationship my fir the first season. Okay. And, uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> of them DMs. So um, she got to see the, the like, they, they hear about gaming. They're like, you do what? So then, like, when she come out to New York and she see everything and do everything, like, it's like, oh, like, it's a whole other world, like, than what people think. Even my brother, I got a twin brother. Uh, he he never like liked playing the video games. Like he we both was athletes, but still in his thirties, he'd still rather be out hooping and spraining ankles and 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 getting elbowed and getting concussions and all that. And I'm like, bro, you still got to get up and go to work. And uh, so for me, I stopped playing and doing all that a long time ago. So when he came out and actually got to experience the 2K League and what I what I did and, and the whole production, and he was blown away. Like it, that, and that's. That's our wow factor, and um, it, and it's something that's something special about our our esports. It's not traditional. It's something that you know you don't really get to experience the same with the tra it's the trash talking. If you're a former athlete, you can respect it, and especially if you're a former hooper, because you 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 get to talk trash from the person sitting across from you, and all at the same time trying to hoop and win and 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 will your yeah. team to a victory. So. 
Yeah, it's relevant, but all of it's just spent in the one. It's just the whole overall experience. Like people don't don't really think nothing about it until they actually experience it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Talk about uh really quickly as well the challenges you talked about coaching high school and now coaching these personalities within the E's <laughs> guys that are all top ranked guys. How do you handle that and how do you manage that? You know what? You know what's crazy is uh, when I coached high school, I never thought about coaching college or anything like that, because I always felt like high school basketball was the last purest form of basketball before they, you know, they go on to college and the pros or whatever. So, like, but I, one thing I used to always think about is like, man, what is it like to be a uh, to be a, a pro coach? trying to tell LeBron, who makes a million times more than you do, uh, what to do. And, like, so now I'm kind of experiencing that to a degree. Like, you know, in high school, coach, players don't get paid. Like, they still rely on their mom, dad, uncle, you know, whatever. So, like, now I'm actually coaching guys who make a salary. Some of them make more than the average American. So it's like you, you really learn how to, how to play the mental game. Uh, more so than anything. You know certain players where you got to stroke their ego a little bit. You know certain players, you got to bring them down a little bit. And uh, it's just that blend. Of, and I think uh, just me overall being older and, and going through a lot, uh, you know, I've had my fair share of uh, interacting with people. I served in the military, uh, a lot of different things. So it's just like it's more of a mental game, uh, coaching professionals than it is in high school. You know, the high school players, that they may give you some problems, but they're going to lean on you because they still in that that phase where they, they need – they still need a parent. They still need a big brother. But now these guys, you know, they can – they can, you know, not saying that this happens, but just an example is, like, they can lose a game and they might get paid in that same night. <laughs> and they might just go out and kick it and, and, and forget about it. But, you know, in high school, after you lose a big game or whatever, that may cost you your scholarship or that may cost you, you know, a lot of different things and you don't get notoriety the same. So uh, it's just like trying to find that balance and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely, it's a challenge at times, but uh, it's something that uh, I'm kind of used to and I, I enjoy the grind. And so you, you get into the draft pool, you get drafted. What comes with that as a, as a player? We know you get the house, you know, and the salary, but what else comes with that? Um, I'm this is like far as with Brooklyn, um, you know, obviously you get access to Live from the camp. Bobby King. Uh huh. This is Bobby real Blaine. fans, real talk. talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest, of course. Real fans, real talk. We the illest on court. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emerald Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and we uh -huh. ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger No matter what sport, this show, we got it covered It's filmed live in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought Everybody knows, uh, you know, Nipsey Yeah, yeah, R.P. How did that affect you, being from Cali? And it affected me different, because like I tell people, we grew up together Okay Like we went to the same thing in high school and all that shit Oh, wow okay. Yeah, so like I tell people, I don't know Nipsey. Like I know Hermes. Like yeah. I, I never met the game bang inside of me. I don't know six old neighborhood. Never. I have no idea who that is. 
Cause you, you I, coming at me. I know, really young at I know Emmy is like, and I know that side of him. Like, like the side that people see after Nip died, that's the side I've always knew. Like, you mm. know what I'm saying? Like, let's get this black shit together, black excellence. Like, this is what we own. Like, I didn't know neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So I tell people that all the time. Like, but it, it affected me a lot because it's just confirmation that anybody who tries to uplift the black race on the, not like you got all these conscious niggas, they just talkers. Yeah, all he's these, actually on the, all on the these, front lines. All these conscious, that. quote unquote, conscious rappers and conscious spokesmen <coughs> and all that shit, they just talkers. That's all they do is blog and argue and debate, right? I'm talking about when you get black people that really is out here playing this monopoly game, like on the mainstream level, they wipe them out. So, it's sad. Yeah, it's, it, like, I tell people this, our real leaders get killed. Like our real, real leaders that get in any form of position to really make a large difference get killed. And it's also, it's normally the people that got control over the streets. Like not the regular conscious niggas that the hood don't respect. It's, yeah. the, it's the conscious niggas in the hood that got control over the streets. Like them type of people. And then people get wiped out. So are you, how are you now embracing what Nipsey was trying to, to See, teach? That, that goes back into like a lot of the shenanigans I do, right? Like I do these shenanigans to hide in plain sight. Okay. You feel me? Like, like there's an algorithm, there's destructive algorithms designed to attack certain people that is pressing certain agendas. So when I do the wild shit or the clown shit, like they back up off me because they like, oh, he, he goofing around, nobody gonna take him serious, cool. So that's just for them to back up off me. But just after Nip passed, um, it was two things that I knew was going to happen. And I knew that LA was going to go up in flame because Nip was the peacemaker. He's the middleman to damn near all the hooks. You know what I'm saying? He's a peacemaker. So when you remove that chess piece from the board, like everybody's going to attack. Yeah. And the first couple of days, it was wild. Like the first three days after Nip passed, it was wild. Like you seen 15 people shot, nine people shot over there. It was wild, wild. And then like that morning, like maybe three days later, four days later, that morning, I'm like, yo, I, I, I got on Twitter and I'm like, yo, man, we need like a million game banker march. Like we need some shit like that ASAP because this shit about to get hectic. Yeah. And if one of these big homies don't stand up to do it, like nigga, LA gonna be on fire forever. Like, and then that, like maybe like a couple of hours later, Big E made the post. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw and the, all the pictures all of the, the, the march. All the extra shit, up. yeah. So that was good, man. Like I, I'm glad that happened. You know what I mean? Because LA, it's still a few knuckleheads that still yeah. You go, you're gonna have yeah, you don't get the people, but like LA look kind of real peaceful right now. So it, has it? Is it still peaceful? Yes, yeah, it's, it's still straight. It's still like problems, but but it ain't as lit as it was. Cause I mean, when you got you know somebody like Nipsey who's who's working with with YG, you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, that, I mean. Everything can't be about war. If, if these two guys was in two separate games can get along and actually be brothers, yeah. then you know the other gang members should be able but to. But that was Nip. Like Nip, if you understand who he was when we was kids, he was always like that. Like he was always the middleman between the Bloods and the Crips. And this was before neighborhood. Then. Yeah. This is Emmys. Like he was always like in the middle of the Bloods and the Crips. Like oh y'all come over here, y'all come over here, stop that, stop that, stop that. So it just it sucks that we had to lose him for this to happen, but it's yeah. amazing at the same time. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, we can keep this up. And I just, actually, and, like, and I said this in a few blogs, but I was like, only way is, it's, it's going to die out because now that we together, parties are going to happen. And then I know what happens when people get alcohol in their system and, and you know, it's shit just stupid happens. Nonsense. Stupid nonsense. So, I, I had made a proposition for the big homies. I'm like, yo, big homies, all the big homies need to meet and sit at the table from every hood. What y'all need to do is y'all need to call meetings in each individual hood and tell all the little homies, y'all got to put in $1,000 in the pot. You got, you got, I don't know, it's probably like 5,000, 6,000 niggas from every hood. Yeah. You feel me? You, you put 6,000, you get 6,000 niggas, put $1,000 in the pot. You feel me? That's yeah. 6,000 from that hood, that's 4,000 from that hood, that's 28, whatever. And then y'all finish buying what Nip them was buying. Yeah. Like y'all niggas could buy, y'all could buy hoods, right? Cause that's what it really is about. Yeah. We can't say we from somewhere if we don't you own don't it. don't own nothing there. That's, yeah. And 
and that's what Nick was doing. He was and buying back the hood. Yeah. So niggas need to put a fuck the cars, fuck the Bentleys, fuck throwing the money in the strip club, fuck the rolly chain, fuck all that. Bum it out for about two years. Bum it out. Save your bread, everybody put in the pot, and let's buy back the neighborhood. That way we got our own store, we got our own law. More, though, we need more people like you saying what you're saying, that people are actually going to really listen I, I've to. I've been it. trying to push this shit for the longest, but, you know, social media got people attention different. We don't follow we don't follow people who saying the right shit. We follow people that are the most numbers. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's what that's that's where, where everything like a, gets messed a, up. A person will look at you and go, "Man, you only got two thousand followers. You ain't making no sense." Yep. Not even if it makes it, like it doesn't God, matter. It don't matter. You don't got enough, you don't got enough followers for me to take you serious. Mm -hmm. And so that's another way they got our people fucked mentally, yep. physically. So, so exactly. I would just say, like, I continue to do what I do. I say what I need to say in, in interviews and blogs, and I. I say the things that I need to say amongst my homies and amongst the people I know it. All I can do is hope they can follow me. Yeah. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 